the roll. And we are about to be live and what we're live. Um, no, we have, we still have three minutes, three more minutes. Yes, if everybody joining us, we've just opened the stream and thank you for being here. Um, we're a little early, so we're gonna wait three minutes so other people can join us as well. Over. Yeah, the gong is over. So we can. Okay, I'll start now. Welcome to the virtual 2020 AOCS annual meeting and expo live stream. I'm Scott Bloomer, Director of Technical Services at AOCS. Today we have with us Dr. Yomi Watanabe. She's the head of the Food Technology Lab at the Osaka Research Institute of Industrial Science and Technology in Osaka, Japan. She's a member of the Japan Oil Chemist Society Official Methods Committee, and she is the JOCS liaison for methods to AOCS. In addition, she is the senior associate editor for biotechnology of the Journal of the American Oil Chemist Society. Dr. Watanabe is engaged in developing enzymatic processes for lipid modification. Recently, she developed a substantial improvement in the enzymatic method for determining the identity of fatty acids occupying the SN2 position in triacylglycerols. Please use the Zoom chat feature to post questions. Questions from the live stream discussion will be answered at the end of the presentation. We look forward to the conversation. With that, Dr. Watanabe, please. 
Thank you, Scott, for your kind, very kind introduction. Today, um, I will introduce an improved method for analyzing the distribution in TAG and the application of the methods to infant formula TAG. Your questions are welcome. Please use a chat feature as Scott introduced before to share your questions. I will answer some questions at the end of this talk. Joint JLCS AOCS official method CH3A19, which was launched last year, is a method to determine the composition of fatty acids at the FN2 position of oils and fats utilizing enzymatic transfer certification by Candida and Parsica lipase. Let me give you an overview of the method first and then explain the analytical procedure in detail. Then I will show you some of the results of testing vegetable and animal fats and oils and finish by showing the application of the method to analysis of the lipids from infant formula. This is the fatty acid composition of an extra virgin olive oil purchased in a local market. As we all know, saturated fatty acids, namely palmitic acid and stearic acid, are distributed mainly at the SN13 position with very little at SN2 position. The absence of saturated fatty acids, especially palmitic acid, is the SN2 position is an important indicator of the purity of extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil is easily adulterated and globally it is the food product most frequently subjected to food fraud. For example, here we see the distribution of fatty acids in oils purchased in 1980s. The fatty acid distribution was identical at all positions of the tag. This clearly indicates that the oils were not natural. They may have been produced by esterification by glycerol from FSA from olive oil. Here is a description of the conventional method for determining the fatty acids in the, in the SN2 position of PAC, originally developed by Brockerhoff in 1965. Fatty acids at the SN1 or 3 positions of PAC are hydrolyzed by pancreas lipase. The hydrolysis or hydrolysis has to be very short, like three minutes, because the two MSG are very unstable in the hydrolysis matrix. The resulting 2 mag is isolated by TLC and the fatty acid composition of the 2 mag spot is analyzed by GC. The method scope is limited to vegetable oils, including olive oils, because pork pancreas lipase doesn't reliably hydrolyze short chain fatty acids and food fats. As short-chain fatty acids and food fats are very important to the flavor and the nutritional value of fats and oils, we have developed a method which not only works on vegetable oils, but is also suitable for milk fats and fish oils. Instead of pork pancreas lipase, a commercial lipase from Candida Antarctica, such as Novozyme 435, is used to selectively convert fatty acids at the SN3 position or one position of TAG to ethyl esters. The resulting 2 mag is isolated by solid phase extraction and brought to GC analysis. It has been shown that CalB is able to catalyze reactions with fatty acids of almost any chain length or degree of unsaturation. Thus, this method is applicable to oils with short chain fatty acids and food fats. I 
Let me explain the procedure of the method. The tag of interest is shaking at 30 degrees for three hours with Cal B in a tenfold excess of ethanol by weight. This is a reaction vial, which I normally use in the lab. It is very important to set the vial horizontally in the shaker to shake hard to get enough mixing. At the start of the reaction, the mixture is two phases with the oil separated at the bottom. After 10 minutes of shaking, the mixture becomes homogeneous. In the reaction, the fatty acids at the SN1 and 3 positions are selectively removed and converted into fatty acid effluences. The resulting two mag molecules are stable in the dry ethanol mixture. After three hours of shaking, the immobilized light base is removed and the reaction mixture can be stored in the freezer or immediately brought to the following SPE step. The solid phase, solid phase extraction is carried out with commercial pre-packed silica gel column. The column is first equilibrated, sorry, with dilution solvent, which is a mixture of hexane and diethyl ether at, in a ratio of eight to two. And the reaction mixture is applied to the column. FAEE is removed from the one three position are recovered in the first fraction. Eluted with a 10 milliliters of the mixed solvent. Any DAG is rinsed out with the next 20 milliliters of the salt mixed solvent. Finally, the two mag is recovered by elution with 10 milliliters of diethyl ether. This entire recovery process takes only five to 10 minutes, which saves lots of time compared to the conventional TLC or column fractionation. Let's look at how the method is solved. This slide shows the fatty acid composition of soybean oil and palm oil along with the fatty acids in the SN2 position obtained in a Japan Oil Chemist Society collaborative study involving 12 bars. The results were very tight with RSD values below 5% in the collaborative study. This slide shows the fatty acid distribution of sardine oil tested in the same collaborative study. Pork pantry slipase is unstable, unsuitable, sorry, unsuitable for the SN2 fatty acid analysis of sardine oil. The RSD values for DHA in the study were, were surprisingly high because was later determined to be the use of GC columns designed for determining trans fatty acids. In addition, we found that extra care was needed to ensure the cleanness of the GC injector. Milk fat was the focus of a separate collaborative study using Chalpy. Pork pancreas lipase is again unsuitable for the SN2 fatty acid analysis of milk fat. This slide shows the fatty acid distribution in milk fat. All 10 labs show the milk fat has only small amounts of short chain fatty acids located at the SN2 position. With milk fat, we determine that the population of fatty acids from the two mass and the use of a, a DB23 colon are recommended. The major advantages of the official method are listed in this slide. The operation is easy and time-saving. The accuracy is high. 
The method has been applied to wide variety of oil, of vegetable, animal, microbial, and algal oils containing short-chain fatty acids and buffa. So far, two oils are out of the scope. Fat with melting points over 60 degrees and castor oil, which is rich in hydroxy fatty acids. Finally, the fatty acid distribution in lipids extracted from milk uh, from infant formulas was analyzed by the official method. Human milk fat is one of the most complex foods known and arguably the most important food on the planet. Thus, by necessity, infant formulas are some of the most complex food matrices human effort can design. Infant formula is a complex mixture of sugars, edible oils, proteins, salts, and vitamins, mimicking breast milk. To make lipids for infant formula, several animal fats and vegetable oils are often blended and interesterified. Human breast milk has a very well-defined fatty acid distribution. In human milk tract, short chain fatty acid locates at the SN3 position and palmitic acid locates at the SN2 position to avoid formation of calcium salt in the gut. Having the proper fatty acid in the SN2 position of infant formula, is absolutely essential for proper infant nutrition. We purchased six different infant formulas locally. Four of them were in powder form and two were in liquid form. Infant formula in powder were dissolved in water and heat it at 70 degrees for 15 minutes with ammonia water. Then lipids were extracted with petroleum ether and diethyl ether using well-known rose gottlieb method. The recoveries were estimated to be in the range of 80 to 95 percent. The extracted lipids consisted mainly of fat. Then the official method CH3A19 was applied to the extract from infant formula. This slide shows the fatty acid distribution intact extracted from one of the infant formulas, sample one. As in human breast milk fat, most of the palmitic acid was distributed at the SN2 position. The infant formula was promoted in the product display as being enriched in PUFA. DHA and EPA were detected in the extracted oil. The DHA was distributed mainly at the SN2 position, indicating that fish oil was probably added to this infant formula. The fatty acid composition and distributions of four of the five remaining infant formula samples were very similar to the sample one. Sample four has very little saturated fatty acid at SN2 position and was clearly based on vegetable oil. In conclusion, the new joint JOCS AOCS method is applicable to a broad, uh, broad range of oils and it's practical for use in determining the fatty acids in the SN2 position of complex food products. International validation is currently planned through ISO led by AOCS. You are very welcome to join the collaborative study. If you are interested, please contact Dr. Bluma, Technical Service Director of AOCS, uh, who's hosting this session. 
I'd like to thank many collaborators who worked to develop this method, providing lipases, oils, and validating the method. With this, I thank for your kind attention and your questions are very welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Watanabe. This is a very large step forward in the analysis of these two mags. It's been needed for a long time, so congratulations. Thank you very much. Have you published the results of your infant formula study? It's under submission now. We'll look forward to seeing that then. Thank you. Uh, here's another question. This method seems it would be very helpful for infant formula manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Would you consider collaborating with infant formula manufacturers who are interested in improving their products? Sure, very much. I appreciate someone has interest. I could work together. It's very nice. You would also, uh, I also wonder here, this question, it seems like this method would be very valuable in fighting olive oil fraud, mm. uh, which is very, uh, it's, it's, there's huge economic impact around the world because of olive oil fraud. And so do you think it would be possible to reduce the incubation time to less than three hours to make it a more rapid uh, method? Um, I hope I could. Um, for, for this, one option or one possibility is to increase the enzyme amount. But it would also we, we also have a risk to facilitate or, or promote the acyl migration from two position to one three. So this is going to be, um, we, we have to investigate, of course, to refine the procedure. Yes, thank you for the suggestion. Yes, I always think about it. Yeah, it's it's a it's very tricky balance with, with the acyl migration. It, it's very, very tricky. Right, exactly. So that's why we are recommending to use dry ethanol to reduce uh, the water to prevent um, the uh, what the ethanol migration. And also, we have found that the the polarity of the alcohol um, affects a lot to the ethanol migration. If you use um, longer chain alcohol, it promotes the easy migration. So um, uh, one time I used propanol and also butanol and then the longer chains, they reduce the specificity, the, the, I mean the position of selectivity. It reduces selectivity. And I expected if I use methanol instead of ethanol, then uh, we could increase or improve the selectivity specific uh, to make the enzyme reaction specific to 1,3. However, what happened was that methanol killed the lipid. So, <laughs> Here's a question. Sure. Have you found it's necessary to treat the candida Antarctic lipase to, to dry before you do this method, or can you just use it as it's received? Okay, that's a very good idea too. And I have uh, also um, laid or set the Kelby in the vac under vacuum condition for overnight, but it didn't have any, well, it didn't change any. So uh, maybe the resin could, what, have absorbed um, some water already, and it's really hard to remove water out of it. But yes, I have several times tried that. So I appreciate if someone has a clue to improve the regional selectivity of the reaction, as well as how to reduce the reaction time. Okay. So I really appreciate if someone join the collaborative study 
and um, get us in. Interesting. That, yeah. Those are great ideas. Do you have time for one more question? Sure. So this question is about, you, you said that the method is not suitable for fats whose melting point is greater than 60 degrees Celsius. Right. right. So would it be possible to take a mixture of a known oil that right. is yeah. like olive oil that you've characterized clearly and mix it with the high melting oil and extract your results that way. Would that be doable? Could you do that? So subtract the base oil from the result. Yeah. It's a new, very new idea. Yes. I definitely want to try that too. Okay. I don't see any other questions. Great. Thank you very much. It's been very interesting listening to your talk. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me to join this session.